What's up guys? I'm Chef Kyle and this is So I Have This Idea. Today we're going to be talking about stocks. Now I know, not the most interesting thing, but it is the foundation for all great food. So I decided to kick off the channel with a deep dive into what I think makes the best stock and we'll talk about how I got here and all of that. But first, if you enjoy this content, please like. If you want to see future videos, please subscribe. If you want to know how you can help me create new content in the future, check out my website. If you want to check out my book, Progressive Comfort, it's 100% free because I just want to share my journey with aspiring cooks. Come visit me at Writing Company in downtown Detroit and don't forget to follow me on social media. Just a reminder, there is a short format via Instagram and other social media, but I want to focus here on long format. Okay, now that we've gotten through all that, stocks. So first of all, I've got my mirepoix, pretty classic. Onion, carrot, celery, I like fennel in mine, and then we add tomato and red wine for a little acid, and then a bunch of spices, celery seed, fennel seed, star anise, parsley stems, thyme, and bay leaf. Obviously, we're starting with beef bones because this is a beef stock. So we've got our beef bones here. These are just canoe cut. We, take the, we use the marrow in the restaurant. We took the marrow out. And so we're going to sprinkle these with celery seed. Now, all of these ingredients are weighed out, very specific amounts. You can find all of the recipes on the link below. So we are going to season these with just celery seed and fennel seed, and now they're going to go in an oven, 450 for 10 minutes. All right, while the bones are going, we're going to start to break down our mirepoix. Carrots, onions, celery is the classic mirepoix. And then in addition to that, I always like a little bit of fennel. Yellow onions. For the celery, I like to take off the leaves because I find that they make the stock a little bit bitter. For things like carrots, you can peel them. Um, I find that the peels make the flavor a little bit more earthy. If you don't want that, you just want sweetness, you can peel them. If you do want that, just go ahead and wash the outside and then you can use the skin. For the fennel, I don't like the leaves, but I do like the stalks. So feel free to just strip the fronds off. Okay, so now we've got our mirepoix done, ready to go. We're gonna go ahead and check those bones. So they've been roasting 10 minutes at 450. All right, so we have our tomatoes. When I started cooking, my chef was great at telling me how to do stuff, but I really wanna know the whys. And one of the things he had me do from the very beginning was make stocks. And we would always incorporate tomato product. And when I would ask Chef, why do we put tomato on the bones? He would say, because that's how stock is made. And this is ultimately why I made the choice to go to culinary school. Because the truth of the matter is, we put tomatoes on the bones because the tomatoes have a lot of sugar and acid. The sugar caramelizes for flavor, and the acid helps break down the collagen in the bones that roasting might not completely take care of. So that's why we put tomato on the bones. So we're gonna roast those for another 10 minutes and then we'll complete this stock. While our bones continue to roast, I wanna talk about why I cook stock this way. We've all been in a kitchen where the, the aromas are just 
so nice. And we think, oh my God, this food smells amazing. It must taste amazing. And then I started thinking one day, like, what if these aromas are actually flavors and they're escaping? How do we keep them in? Maybe the ideal kitchen is one where there's no smells whatsoever. And I thought, okay, let's test this out. Let's make a stock. I didn't know how to do this. And then uh, one day I was at my parents' house and I noticed that their crock pot, which I hate crock pots, had this gasket around the inside. And it very clearly said, do not cook with this gasket like locked. I thought, well, what is it for? Well, it turns out it's to take the food that you've been overcooking for two days, and unplug it, close it, lock it, and that gasket will keep things from spilling as you transport it to your neighbor's house for a potluck. So I did exactly what every chef would do, and I ignored the instructions, and I constructed my stock, which we're about to do here, and I closed that lid, and I locked it, and I let it go for three days. And during that three days, there was no smell. No smell. You could not tell we were cooking anything in the house. And at the end of that three days, we poured out the most decadent brown beef sock I've ever had in my life. And from that point on, I was changed. Now, you can only make a couple quarts at a time at home, which is great for home cooking because beets bouillon cubes and a great use for that slow cooker that I would have never touched. But uh, how do you do this in a restaurant? Well, we used our combi oven set at 180 full steam and we would put hotel pans loaded with stock and we would put a lid on it and then we'd wrap them several times over so nothing was escaping. And we'd put it in those combi ovens for three days. Now, great, like, obviously, combi oven's a luxury, extra three days is a luxury, but this is what we would do. And it came out the same. So the whole point of this exercise is cooking a stock without any of the flavor escaping through evaporation. So our beef bones have roasted. I went out to buy a crock pot to do this in because that's how I figured out this technique. And I, you know, want to make this accessible for the home cooks as well as professionals. And my wife very correctly pointed out, like, who really uses crock pots anymore when everyone has these multi cookers at home? Um, and she's right. Everybody has them. And hardly anybody I know has a crock pot stuff. So anyway, we went with the multi cooker here. And we're going to use it on slow cook mode. But if you have that crock pot with the gasket, by all means, use that guy. It is perfect for it. So we have our pan. We're going to deglaze with red wine. So all we're doing here is taking cold wine, which also has acid, obviously great flavor. And we are pulling out a lot of the flavor that's stuck to the bottom of the pan. Okay. So we call that deglazing. So now we've got our red wine, our beef bones, our roasted tomatoes, and now we're gonna add our mirepoix, celery, onions, carrots, fennel. We're gonna add parsley stems, thyme, bay leaves, black peppercorns, and star anise. Okay, obviously you can tweak this however you want. The last thing we're gonna add is ice water. Why ice water? It's not necessary, you can just add water, but I will tell you, since I got my first executive chef position in 2009, I have been cooking my stocks exclusively with either ice or ice water because I really feel like starting it cold helps extract the most flavor from those bones. Okay, the colder the better. So we're gonna put our lid on. And now we're gonna set this thing. Slow cook, the lowest possible uh, temperature that you have, 
This one goes up to 24 hours. So we're gonna set it to 24 hours and we're gonna let it do its thing. And then every day, we're gonna reset it for 24 hours without touching it. We're not gonna open it, we're not gonna vent it, we're not gonna do anything. So this slow cooker is great because it has a gasket on the inside because it's also a pressure cooker. It has this vent because it's also a pressure cooker. It also has a little vent. Um, so there is not a situation where this thing will explode because it's gonna vent any excess steam. But if you're cooking it on the lowest one, uh, it should be around 180 degrees inside, which is exactly where I like to cook my stocks. Okay, so we're gonna let this thing go for three full days. And through the magic of proper mise en place and preparation, we have our finished beef stock. We're gonna pull out our stock, okay? Now we're gonna strain. Now you can see this is a very dark, rich stock. Okay, so at this point, you can be done. You can use this stock for sauces and anything that you want. You can use it to braise meat in. There's a million applications for this stock. Much, much better than bouillon cubes. I mean, I remember when I was in high school, one of the first things I learned how to cook was beef stroganoff. I cook it like every week just because it was like the one. It was like the one recipe I knew and I really liked it. Um, but that recipe that I learned on called for these beef bouillon cubes. And I thought like, I don't understand why we're putting something that someone else has made into this. Um, we've got our stuff. Okay. Again, million uses just as it is. So the next thing that I would normally do with this stock is I would put it in a refrigerator overnight. And at that point, all the fat will seep up to the top and congeal. And then if you strain it again, you're straining out all that fat, okay? Fat is flavor, but it's pretty much added everything that it can to this stock as is. So it's just gonna make things greasy at this point. So let's put it in the refrigerator overnight, let the fat congeal, strain it out, okay? Now the next thing that I like to do with stock is this nifty little trick called cold clarification. So if you've ever had a consomme, the old way of making consommes was to make this thing called a raft with eggs and uh, mirepoix and scraps of all kinds, even eggshells, and it floats to the top and it, it starts to coagulate as it cooks and then in, you form this little circle inside and then you're spooning the impurities through it. It's like this filter that if it breaks, the whole thing is screwed. And it's just messy and not very pleasant. And so cold clarification is this technique where you can, through very little effort, get a superior product. So here's the deal with cold clarification. Okay, the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to freeze this stuff. And this is going to take at least overnight with a cold stock. You just... You want it to go longer than maybe necessary because it's got to be frozen solid. If there's any unfrozen pieces, it's not going to come out as good as it should. And then you're going to look at me like I'm crazy. Okay, so that stock is in the freezer. It's got to freeze overnight. When this happens, the gelatin that is in that stock from those bones that have been roasting for three days form a spider web as they freeze. And then as we thaw the, the frozen stock slowly under refrigeration, it's cold enough where the, the frozen stock turns back into water, but the frozen gelatin doesn't melt. And the frozen gelatin web keeps everything, all the impurities stuck to it and all you get when you strain it out, is this crystal clear, beautiful consomme. Okay, so here's that frozen stock. You can see, hard as a rock. You can use ice tray, ice tray cubes, you can use larger containers, but the bigger the ice cubes, the longer they're gonna take to thaw. And this is already a very lengthy process. So I'd say, you know, the smaller the tray, the faster you get to enjoy this product, okay?
So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take cheesecloth. And this is a very, very important step. You're gonna take this cheesecloth, you're gonna put your ice in it, and you're gonna tie it up. And you have to work fast here because you want, it, you want to get all this done before it starts to thaw, okay? So as you tie this up, you're going to suspend it. So the easiest way to do this, if you don't have a rack in your refrigerator, is just take a spoon or any kind of dowel, tie it to that. You can see it's suspended by a couple inches, okay? The more the better. And you're gonna let this thaw under refrigeration for up to three days. So again, we're letting it thaw gently under refrigeration because we're letting the frozen stock thaw while the gelatin stays cold. It takes a long time. And then there's this thing after three days where you then have this beautiful consomme, okay? And what's left in here is the gelatin and all the impurities. So what are you gonna wanna do intuitively? You're gonna say, oh, there's all this stock in there. I should squeeze it out, get as much as possible. But guess what? The impurities are in there. You're gonna squeeze them out too. That's the whole reason it's suspended because we're not putting any weight. The only thing dripping, you know, the only force on this stock is temperature and gravity. And it's gonna gently filter through itself and you're gonna have this amazing consomme left at the end. Seven days ago, we had raw beef bones, raw mirepoix. We roasted those bones. We hit them with a little bit of tomato acid. We roasted the mirepoix if you want. We built the stock and for three days that stock cooked, extracting all that flavor. That was a week ago. Four days ago we strained that stock. We let it sit in a refrigerator and then we strained off the fat. That was four days ago. Three days ago we froze it. Let it freeze overnight. That was three days ago. Two days ago we pulled it out of the molds. We let it thaw under refrigeration and we patiently waited. That was two days ago. And now today, we have the most amazing, cold clarified, flavorful beef stock. All it took was a little technique and a lot of patience.